I really think one of my earliest memories was right before surgery. I was crying and freaking out and and um, I just remember being a little girl and, and just praying and my dad praying over me before I would go into a surgery and I don't think I really understood what that meant, but I've, I've always known that, um, you know, God was there protecting and, and doing things for me physically. And I had one surgery in particular where the doctor tried to straighten my spine with a metal plate, which actually broke in half over the course of an hour because the spine wouldn't stay straight. And um, it's still in there to this day. But yeah, I faced many, many surgeries as a little girl. And that was probably the hardest thing I had to deal with as a child was just being in the hospital all the time and facing surgeries because that was a huge fear for me. Like it was the norm, but I also, you know, I was just afraid to go into surgery. That, that whole idea scared me. I work at Scottish Rite Children's Hospital helping um, children with disabilities and their families. Hey, Kel. Hey, <laughs> thanks for coming back. What's up? So I have this new family. Yeah. It's a new spina bifida family. Okay. Um, the little boy is six months old, mm -hmm. um, and the mom just has tons of questions and concerns. She just cries every time I talk Ever to her. Ever since I was a little girl, I knew I wanted to work with people with disabilities. And I got through DBU, and um, I got my degree in psychology, and I decided, you know, the Lord truly led me to social work. He truly did through different people that I had interned with, and um, I just knew that was the profession I needed to go into. I, I want to develop and in, implement programs for people with disabilities to find social and emotional support. Um, I'm planning on going either into computer programming mm -hmm. or video game design. Ah, oh, that's so yes. cool, Jacob. Yes. Oh my gosh. The, the medical issues that they're facing and um, the isolation that it often brings, needing understanding, needing empathy, and just to be able to relate on that level. Good, good. It's important to start everything. We face a lot of the same issues, and I can talk to them about things that I can't talk to any other person on this planet about. Do y'all have tea? Do you have tea? It is, I mean, it's like when I go to the mall, I, I do turn heads, I walk into a room, and. And it's something that people don't see all the time. And sometimes I don't want to face that. I don't, I, I do not struggle with comparisons. Not with my friends, not with in the magazines, not with the models on TV. I just don't. And I don't even know how to explain that because when I step back and look at my life, I think, Wow, I'm blessed to not wake up and feel those things because so many of my friends do feel the weight of, you know, not measuring up to whatever is, you know, perfection. And um, I, I am just, what's unbelievable is I, I'm not, I, I don't make a comparison because I know there's no comparison. Like how, how could I compare myself to those women who don't have a disability. I, it's, it just would blow my mind to even try. Who did you take? For me, it's like if you live every day consumed by your disability, that's not freedom, that's bondage. Like, and, and that, I mean, Christ has come to set us free, and I believe that he does. He, he sets individuals who live with disabilities, he sets them free mentally, emotionally just free from the opinions of people, free from the fears that society brings on, free from the pressures that you feel um, to be normal, whatever that means. I mean, he does, he sets you free and, and he just gives you the confidence to be who you are. And I, I mean, that's, that's who he's been to me. Mm -hmm. 